Welcome back, episode three now. We're all excited to be here. Hope you are too. If you're new, here's what we're doing. This is a soap-based podcast. So we're gonna go through the scripture, observation, application, and prayer of the verses that my co-host here, Abbott. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Has brought us today. And he's brought us the scripture, which means that I brought us, I brought us the guest. We got Pata Avi, and that's what we're gonna be calling her this entire time. What's up, Avi? Hi. It's weird to see you all, but not see you all. But I hope you're all listening, and I miss you. We're <laughs> looking directly at you, and we can see you through your phones. We can. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> I don't even know if this camera can see you. I think that camera can see you. But anyway, regardless, uh, we're glad you're joining us here today. Um, so I think we can dive right into scripture with that out of the way. As long as people know what we're doing, let's just do it. Okay. Today, we are in Genesis chapter 18 through 20. Abby, you want to read it? <laughs> I see you have it open. Yes, I do have it open. So we're starting on uh, verse 20, and it says that, Then the Lord said, The outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sin so grievous that I will go down and see if what they have done is as bad as the outcry that has reached me. If not, I will know. And then we flash forward a little bit to Abraham, and Abraham s says, Will you sweep away the righteous and the wicked? What if there are 50 righteous people in the city? Will you really sweep it away and not spare the place for the sake of the 50 righteous people in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to kill the righteous with the wicked, treating the righteous and the wicked alike. Far be it from you. Will not the judge of all the earth do right? The Lord said, If I find 50 righteous people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Then Abraham spoke up again and said, now that I have been so bold as to speak to the Lord, though I am nothing but dust and ashes, what if the number of the righteous is five less than 50? Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five people? If I find 45 there, he said, I will not destroy it. Once again, he spoke to them. What if only 40 are found there? For the sake of 40, I will not do it. And this continues down. We're going to skip a little bit. And Abraham goes all the way down for 10 people. And God answers, for the sake of 10, I will not destroy it. And then the very last verse says, when the Lord had finished speaking with Abraham, he left and Abraham returned home. So this chapter kind of ends on a little bit of a cliffhanger here. You'd have to read the rest of the next chapters to see exactly what ends up happening with Sodom and Gomorrah. But today, I, I think we should just focus on Abraham. Yeah. All right. Abraham, he was a bold man, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. All right. For the uh, listeners and viewers at home, or not at home, uh, now we're moving into our observation portion. And mm -hmm. this is an awesome way for you guys to see how a soap is done. And you, we'd love if you would practice it along with us. Share your own observations, and we're gonna have some fun here today. One thing I noticed is that Abraham, he was talking to God a lot in that passage. <laughs> it was a long conversation with God. Kind of right? just the whole going. passage, right? Yeah. Right? So, um, not only that, but he he was kind of bargaining him with him a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. He was like, yeah, so God, right? And one thing uh, <laughs> someone had said was like, he was pestering God. But we're like, no, you can't really pester God, can you? Because he wants your attention. He wants he wants your insights. He wants he just wants you to talk to him. And that's what Abraham, to, to the base of it, is doing in this passage. And what would have happened if he didn't, right? So... Yeah, and Abraham is worried about a lot of people that he's never met, right? Like, he is not from Sodom or Gomorrah. He hasn't really interacted with most of these people, but he's really kind-hearted and really worried about all these people that are living there. So, which I think is a really good point. Like, will you, do you pray for people that you don't know as much as you pray for people that you do know, right? Like, do you pray for people across the earth? Right, and how many people are in a city? A lot. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like a why it's a city, 50. right? I don't, so, I don't the, think I've ever pr prayed for anybody outside of like my family or mm -hmm. my friends. So mm -hmm. that that'd be kind of hard. Like praying for somebody like all the way across on the other side of the world would be kind of hard because you don't know them. Yeah, and it's really cool what we do when we bring in missionaries because then that 
kind of forces that to the front of our mind like hey we have people from this even this church that are on the other side of the world and then we'll get like little prayer cards or in the very least we get them put into our mind again right we're reminded of of those people that we should be praying for and it's so important to be praying for those people because that's like the best way that you can support them is with your prayer and and financially as well i didn't i didn't know that we were going to get into missionary <laughs> talk with this but uh it's all good it's all good so abraham pretty cool guy how about god in this story though well you know i think it was cool that for just 10 people in the city that he was willing to spare the whole entire mm -hmm. city imagine yeah. imagine if it was like well, okay let's throw out a number for how many people were in the city and it's definitely going to be wrong unless by some miracle it isn't say it's more than 10 people in the city that's my guess right yeah but there is a lot of wickedness in the city and that's kind of some of the context that we're missing from these certain passages is that there's tons of wickedness in the city right it's not a city that has found favor with god in the very least but for the sake of 10 righteous people this whole city has been saved right so if we can become closer to righteousness maybe we're saving our city too and you know i think that he not only is he showing those 10 people kindness i think he's also showing all those unrighteous people mm -hmm. oh absolutely a lot of kindness by promising that he might save them because of those 10 people right and then it's like these these people are getting saved for the for the works of their neighbors too so show us some loves out there for your neighbors too. And we talked uh, uh, on the first week about who our neighbors were and be a good neighbor to those people because really good neighbors is what saved the city. Like Can a good neighbors. Can. <laughs> <laughs> Aw, I had one more thought. What's your thought? Give us your thoughts. Um, give them. <laughs> Another thing I think about me, when I audience. look at this passage is this is a really good example of what prayer is, right? If you're struggling oh, yeah. with what prayer is, this is just a really good passage where it's just God and Abraham going back and forth, right? Like a completely kind of normal conversation. And if you're struggling with what do I pray about? How do I pray, right? That's It's good to look at our examples in the Bible to see how those people prayed and know what to do. Yeah, and if you're struggling with learning how to pray, uh, we can practice that also a little bit later in this podcast mm -hmm. as well. So. Stay tuned until then, but for now, what do we got going on? What do we got going on? I'm excited. I don't know. But <laughs> I know. That's just the end of the sentence. <laughs> I don't know. And then it cuts. Three, two, one. Hey, hey let's, let's check, check out, out our application. application. Smile, big smile. What's up? I got Pastor Abby with me today. We're on our mobile cam now, and we're ready for our application, which I have ready, and it's just over here. If we can, uh, that's your cue, Abbott. That's your cue, because I'm pretending I have a plan, but you're not actually, you're going to interrupt my plan. And I got my application right over here. Um, help? I'm a little stuck. Abbott? Again. What are you doing Again? What do you mean, again? I mean. Abbott, you have to stop doing this. Um, how did we get him down last time? Uh, uh, I think we used a ladder. Where did we put the ladder? Oh, no. Abbott, have you seen the ladder? Uh, no, but I, I was getting my ball. That it came up here, so I was getting my balls uh, down. And I, here, catch. <laughs> you didn't okay. catch. Well. Okay, uh, before he gets tired from hanging up there, we have to find this ladder. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's go. go. Let's go. Let's go. There'd probably be a ladder in here. Maybe, I mean, you put a ladder in the closet, right? Oh, yeah, Jenner's. Oh, no. Oh, well, okay. Uh, go. where else? Um, let's check the kitchen. Okay. Did you find it in, over here? In the, oh, man. Um. I found it! You did? Yeah, there's a snack. Josiah! Hold my sandwich. Ladders make you go up. I'm going up to find the ladder. Wait, but if you were up, how would you get a ladder up there if you were up there? Like, with the ladder? But, but then the ladder's on the ground, Josiah. Oh, dang it, not again. I like it down. 
Uh, I think I saw a ladder by the the playground. <laughs> Thanks for holding my sandals. Let's go to the playground. Okay. I don't know. Do you think it's up here somewhere, guys? Yeah. You, uh, check the tunnel. Check the tunnel. Uh, check the slides. Put <gasps> on the slide backwards, like face first. What? No. Yeah. It didn't stop me, so it wasn't in there. I, okay. I thought the ladder was in the playground, but that was the monkey bars. Forgive me oh, for being confused. Uh, Josiah, how are we gonna? How are we gonna get? How do you get a billy bar? Wait a minute. Where'd you get that from? Wait. You couldn't have gotten it from the kitchen because we checked there. Oh. Hold on. Yeah, you have secrets. Come on, here. Hey, I found the ladder. Oh, I it. You're not stuck. I found the ladder. Hey. Albert, we're going to get you the ladder, buddy. Hang up there. You just stay right, right there. We're gonna get you down. Right. <laughs> so, Abbott, what was it like being stuck up there? I don't know. Well, here's your ladder, sir. Thank you. I don't want to get stuck up there again. Maybe you should just but carry gotta, a ladder everywhere you go. Yeah, maybe that. if you had a ladder up there while you were stuck up there, that'd help you get back down up there. <laughs> but I got a dilly bar out of you guys leaving to look for the ladder, which I already had. How did you get the dilly bar? That's Is what that I thought. Secret. And in other news, I finished my snack. All right, well. It's time for prayer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, have, a, I have something to request. I'm crying. That. My teeth are cold. It's almost like you ate a frozen sandwich. I'm ready. A request that we can help Abbott get down. How about we request that Abbott doesn't get stuck up there again. That would make more sense, but I think my request sounds a little more realistic. better. Oh, because Much you more just, realistic. Yeah, because You're a climber, eyes, so eyes. you get stuck. It's kind of his thing to get stuck some places. It's actually what he does, is he'll, he'll go up a place, and then my job is to get him back down. Oh. And that's how the whole J and A adventure thing works so well. As long as you've got it organized, I guess I can't knock you guys. So. You, know, you can't ask us to go faster if the timer's on zero. Yeah, we haven't even said anything. Yeah, nothing's happened. <laughs> <laughs> hey, future Daniel, how hey, do you feel? He was giving me the whole. <laughs> I can right. give him more work for Daniel for that. All right, so let's get Wait. into the prayer. We got a prayer request for uh, Abbott. Not to get stuck anymore, or in the very least, to bring a ladder if he does, again. I have a question. How What's do I question? bring a ladder everywhere? How'd you bring a ladder with you to get stuck on the wall? Secrets. Uh-huh, uh-huh, well, uh-huh. Keep your secrets. Yeah, you keep your secrets. Anyway, uh, let's get on to the prayer. Bada Abby, could you pray for us? Dear Lord, I just want to lift everyone up who's listening to the podcast and just pray that you will continue to give us even more kindness for one another, right? Even if it feels a little bit like chasing Abbott around with a ladder, Lord, I just pray that you will give us kindness that will overflow so that we will continue to give even more kindness to all the people around us. In Jesus' name, amen. Very amen. good, very good. Amen, Z's. Let's do it again next week. Excited to see you then.